Hi, it's Paul from Wicked Acorn. We haven't done a shed video in a while. As a matter of fact, I think the last one we did was how to make an apple picker video, and it's almost that time again. I got to make a Manchester bee mosaic. Now that's what we're going to be doing today. I got to have it ready for the sale makers market on Sunday, and tomorrow I have to go shoot some footage for a completely unrelated video. And I don't think I'm going to have time to get that video ready for Saturday, so I figured since I got to make a mosaic and I've been threatening to do uh, how to make one of these videos, I'd do that and hopefully we'll have this ready for Saturday. So that's what we're going to be making. It's a Manchester bee mosaic. It's inspired by the ones in the floor of the Manchester City Hall, the mosaic in the floor. It's absolutely beautiful. Can't wait to get in and see what they've done with the place. They've done a complete uh, renovation of the place or restoration. I don't know if it's one or the other. And uh, hopefully we'll see that soon. So I've done several of these over the years and I figured I may as well do a printout of it. I did this in SketchUp. That used to be uh, free software, but uh, I don't think it is anymore. So. I'll try and put a link to that in our to our website, wickedacorn.com, and you can follow along. So let's get over to the shed and crack on with this. So you can use just about anything you want for backing for a mosaic. Uh, I'm in this case I'm gonna use this three quarter inch plywood or eighteen millimeter or whatever it is. This this thickness here. <laughs> I call it three-quarter even though it's not actually three-quarter inch uh, this tables uh, for interior use but you can get this uh, product it's called this, the brand name is Hardy Hardy board I think or Hardy backer and it's, it's basically cement so you can use that as well it's a lot it's a, it's a bit harder to work with especially with a circle as we're making a circle, I've just made a little trammel compass with some holes in it. Took a few tries to get the right diameter and maximize our material as best we can. I'll just screw this in the center here. Go around with my pencil and mark out our circle. It's as easy as that. So, try not to be in the way too much. It's a jigsaw with uh, I don't know what kind of blade that is. So well, there's our tabletop. Now, I've made these out of half inch plywood before, or whatever that is in those French measurements. Uh, but they don't look quite thick enough. Half inch is totally fine for a table this size, but it just doesn't look the proper thickness. So I decided to go with this three quarter inch plywood, and it's. Um, Actually, I just got this, I uh, bought it from the, uh, the timber yard, lumber yard, what do you call it here? The hardware store, we'll call it. Uh, and it was just a, a cutoff piece. I think it cost me three or four pounds for this, this bit here, which was... So you can get this stuff pretty cheaply and uh, as a matter of fact, I'm not above pulling it out of the tip. Don't look down on the tip, tip tippers. We're recycling. We're saving the planet a little bit. So we've moved back inside here now, and first order of business is to do a cleanup. Because, uh, as I said, I'm getting ready for the sale makers market. And uh, actually, this is a print 
of what we're making. Let's uh, print them on mugs and coasters because they take such a such a long time to uh, ceramic coaster. It takes such a long time to make these mosaics that uh, I rely on these prints to. This one on slate. I rely on these prints to uh, make a living. I do sell the uh, mosaics, but uh, I don't make a lot of them because they take so long to make. So first order of business is to clear off my workbench here so we can work on our mosaic. Back in a minute. So we got our plywood ready. We got our printout ready. So I'm just going to center this on here and tape it on. Just use packing tape. Clear packing tape. You'll see in a minute why. So I'll just cut off a few little bits to tape it on here. And we'll center it. So we've got a black, I can't remember the exact names, uh, and they've, as I said, they've changed them. It used to be called Black Oxide. It may have a different name now. And this one used to be called Parchment, and this is the white. I don't know if you can see the difference there. You can see it here. It's just a little, little bit different and yellow so as you can see we got the black and yellow the white wings and the field is parchment and you don't need a lot i don't uh, i don't recall how many you need for this but it's very few uh we'll know at the end uh, so the tools this is a good tool to have a uh, tile cutter uh, this actually I don't I don't know the name of this the name of this it's a it's a tile cutter and you don't really need that tool but it's nice to have because you can just use this one this one is a tile cutter as well and it does exactly the same thing so you could use that you could use that and a straight edge if you need to make straight cuts, which you do a lot in this particular mosaic. Or you could just go for it. Uh, I also use these, and these are just simple end cutters. Just simple end cutters. And they get dull, and I just continue to use them. I sharpen them occasionally, but what I need to do, because I actually have this proper tile cutter, nibbler or whatever it's called, and I actually prefer these, the, these to this. This gives a cleaner cut for some reason. I don't know why. These are carbide and they, they stay quite sharp, but I find that this one crushes the tile when I'm making small cuts and, and I can't get it to do exactly what I want it to do. Whereas this, this works better, but, uh, and, and you can just sharpen it. Whereas the carbide are much more difficult to sharpen. So what I'm going to do is actually rig up some way that they don't bash together like that. Cause that's what makes them dull when they bash together. It, they dull themselves more than, uh, you see, these don't go together. It's got to stop right here. So they can't go together. These don't. But anyway, it's, uh, and I also have these. And these get used occasionally. You can cut, uh, curvy lines a little bit with those. Uh, tweezers. 
I use those quite a bit. Uh, this thing here is just something I found. You could use anything. It's like a dental tool kind of thing. I think it's actually a mechanics tool, but it's like a little dental tool and you can uh, use it to dig out the grout later. We're far from there. <laughs> we're, we're a long ways from grouting. But you, when you uh, grout, you use that to dig out your... Anyway, I'll, we'll see that when we get there. Uh, another thing I use is this very well used... Um, it's a stone for sharpening knives and stuff. And I like to knock the sharp edges off with that. You can use sandpaper. I've used sandpaper. And... Uh, but that can get expensive because it wears out pretty quickly. And this has lasted quite a long time. So that's about it for the tools. So let's, uh, usually when you start, you want to start in the middle. And the middle, these three pieces here, I'll just use this the tweezers, the point here. This piece here, this piece here in the middle, and this piece here, and this piece here are black. These three pieces, and this is yellow. And so I'm talking about, <laughs> get, it, get up high. This piece here, this piece here, and this piece here. And they're the ones you need to do first, and they're the hardest ones to do in the whole thing. So let's have a go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to lay this aside for a sec so you can see what I'm doing here with this overhead camera, hopefully. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm just going to cut this in half because I, I use the, uh, it's got kind of a little round over here to take the uh, sharpness off of it. And uh, I don't use that. In most cases, I use it actually on the borders. I use it so you'll get a feel for this. But and this is really quite dull. The blade, the blade, I guess you call it, needs to be replaced. It should have a kind of sound as you do it, and this one does it. And it does a little, little tiny score of a line. This does exactly the same thing. I'll show you that. And this one snaps it as well. This, this has a snapper, just like this one, but I prefer to use this one. So then you just put this, the V, the center of the V on either side, black bit on the top, and you just squeeze together and it snaps it. So I'll just show you this this one doing it because this one does it just as well um, I don't want to do this but I will so you see that does exactly the same thing I don't know if you can see that little scratch it's a tiny little scratch and you know, it does the same thing but as you can see it's not as straight and I didn't use a straight edge but no odds so let's come back here and we'll just get that first piece cut. I'll move this up so you can see. I think you can see it there. It's just a little tiny scratch. That's all it does. It scratches. Same as cutting glass. And it's a very similar, it's probably the exact same thing as a glass cutter. It's got a little wheel. Can you see that? It's just a little wheel. And all my tools are quite dull at the moment. So this, as I said, this bit is the hardest to do. Piece cut. I have to do up a bunch of mass produced pieces here soon. So I'm going to cut it to this width here. This first piece. So I need to cut it there. You probably can't see that, but you don't need to see much to This is not how I do this usually, but I'm doing it for camera here. So, 
side. And then you snap it. Now I want to make that diamond shape in the middle. So I drew this out in SketchUp and um, this is my interpretation of it. Now I like to do this in one piece, but that's not critical. So I'm just going to go like that. You can see that's all sticky there. And now I'll go to my blue end cutters here. Now I don't think you're going to be able to see this, but I will try. So I've got my line there and I just put it on the line like so. And I, I have a drawer here, actually, these plastic drawers, you know, those things. I'll, I'll get a shot of that so you can see it. And I do my cutting into this drawer. So I don't think you're going to be able to see this. Maybe I'll move this out of the way so you can see it. I usually do it over the drawer here so all the bits that fly go in the drawer. But I'll do it up here so you can see. So it's as easy as that. So now I'm going to mirror that cut. And this is where it gets tough. So, get it over here on camera. So it's got to be that long. I'll just do this end cut here. Now, as I said, this is actually one of the most difficult pieces to make in the whole mosaic. Not too bad. It's a little asymmetric. And I do get very anal about that. I shouldn't, but I do. Okay, let's. So there we go. You'll uh, probably not have success like that at the beginning. You see now it, it stays there, right? But what I do is I actually take my stone and this is just it, this I wish I had never started doing this because it makes so little difference but it does make a difference you don't have to do this this is what you do I mean what we're doing here is absolutely no different than tiling a bathroom floor except you're making a gazillion cuts you know like instead of using full tiles you know you always have to cut out around the toilet and cut out around pipes and cut out around things it's absolutely no different and when you do cut um, a tile in a bathroom for instance you you need to s sand off these edges so they're not sharp and you don't want a kid sliding across so all you do is you just Give it a little rub like that. And my poor old sharpening stone is quite, quite worn out. So that's all you need. A couple of little scrapes like that. And that gives you, and I don't like it to be too sharp, too pointy. I find the points, the pointy bits on the end, so I just kind of round that bit over. And you want to be a little gentle there. Now, if you got these bits sticking out, it makes it more difficult to put the next piece up to it. So you can just grind that off. It just takes a couple of scrapes across the stone in it.
Now we've only got another million pieces to cut yet. So let's just put that on and I'll pause for a moment. Well, I'll, uh, I need to get my head in the way here. So you can see, there we go. Now you can still take these off and reposition them as needed. Well, there's our first piece. So I'll pause there. Actually, no. Yeah, I'll pause there and get some pieces prepped for cutting. So I'll, I'll cut a bunch on here to the width that I need. And I'll just show you that quickly because we need all these bits around here. So I'll show you that quickly before I pause. So what I need is pieces this wide. So I do that by, I do that by cutting it twice that wide. And you'll see in a second. So I want it that wide. It's been a while since I've done this guy. There's actually a, a smaller square one that I do. And these are actually a bit smaller. He's, he's a little bit smaller than the other guy. And I just do him on a square. And so as a result, being smaller, all the pieces are a bit smaller. And I make more of these than I do of these. More of the square one than the round one. Um, so I got all those numbers in my head memorized. So let's see, what is this? So that, and there are actually, there's a little ruler here that I use. Again, you could use a straight edge and I'll actually show you that. So it looks like it's about there. That. Might be a little big, but it's okay. So I do a bunch like this, as you can see. Now I can see the tiny little scratch and I'm lining that up with the ruler. And you'll get a feel for this. It takes, it takes takes a while to get the feel of how hard to press down and this movement. But you'll get you'll get it. It, it takes a bit of practice, and you you will get it eventually. Now now that I've got this, all these scores. I don't know if you can see that. All these score marks here. Can you see that? No. No, I don't think you can see that. What I do is I cut, I will break it every second one. So I'll do that every second one. I got an uneven number. It breaks and crushes like that sometimes. I'm close to the edge here now, but that's no odds. We can use that. So when you've got this with the score down the middle, it's easier to get, you see, it will, it will snap where you don't want it to. And as I said, I'm gonna make a bunch of these off camera. You see it's breaking, not where I want it. And that happens. So I need a whole bunch of these. So I'll cut these up off camera and then we'll come back and I'll show you putting those in place. So as you can see, we've made a great deal of headway here. And this video's become much more in depth than I thought. And uh, I think we're gonna have to do this in parts. So I'll show you how we got to here in part two. Coming up soon.